the circle of life is all in the app life cycle. One important note is that app life cycle is not the same as widget life cycle. If you want to find out more about widget life cycle, check out the previous video. We have four different states we need to know about, that being detached, inactive, paused and also resumed. We'll start off with the detached state. This happens when the application is still hosted on the Flutter engine, but is detached from any host views. This could for example happen after a destroyed view due to navigator pop. The second one being the inactive state. When the application is in this state, it does not receive any user input. This one happens in different scenarios for Android and iOS. But one example where both platforms will have this state is when you take a phone call. The third state, being paused, is when the application is not visible at all to the user. One example is when you press the home button on your phone and the application minimizes, on pause will be called. And we also have the last state being the resumed state. And this is when the application is visible and responding to user input. And this will be called when you navigate back into the app. If you like this kind of videos, please let me know by subscribing to the channel. And let's dive into the code. Here I have the start of a new project. As always, we just start by removing all of the comments. And what we will do is just remove all of the code in the homepage. We don't care about any UI kind of things, so we'll just make it return a scaffold. And then of course removing the state and the method. That will leave us with a bare bones stateful widget. And on this state we can start by adding our widgets binding observer. This will let us interact with a bunch of different methods regarding different scenarios of this app. Here we can see in the documentation if we use the with keyword or the mixin, we will be able to decide which methods we want to implement. But if we use the implementation keyword, all of those methods will be enforced. So if we just try that, we can see that we need to override 10 different methods. And there are a bunch of different ones. Things like change accessibility features, change app lifecycle state, and that's the one we are most interested in. We also have did change locales, did change metrics, did change platform brightness, and so on. As we are only interested in one of those as of now, we'll start by just removing all of those methods and use the with keyword instead. Now we can override ourselves and we'll override the did change app lifecycle state. After we have done that, if we go back up to the widget binding observer, and check the documentation. We can see that we also need the widgets binding add observer and also the widgets binding remove observer. This will be called in init state and dispose respectively. And we will just start by adding it in init state. So by overriding the init state method, we can access the widgets binding instance. And on this instance, we have a method called add observer. Here we can just pass this as we are implementing the widgets binding observer. Now we will do pretty much the same thing with the dispose. So we will just override the dispose. And we will almost do the same, just writing widgets binding dot instance. And then here we can call remove observer. And this will pretty much be the same, we just pass this as a parameter as well. Now if we look at our did change app lifecycle state, we'll start by just adding a print statement. In the print statement I will add app lifecycle state. And just adding a colon for the state. So now if we just start up the application. We can see that it's just a white screen because we don't have any kind of UI. Now if we press the home button, we can see that first the inactive state is printed and then the pause is printed. Now if we go back into the application, we are then going to see the resumed being printed. Now this can be sometimes quite hard to see, so we can just filter out what we added in our print statement. So we only see all of the prints with the app lifecycle state. Now doing the scenario again, where we just go back and in again, we can see that all of these three are called. So now if we go back into the code in the did change the app lifecycle state, here we can do for example a if statement and checking if the state is equal to a specific state. And then of course depending on that state do the actual code that you want to do. 
For example, on past, you could have that you would save a timer or a date. And then when you get back to resumed, you could calculate the time that was actually spent in the background to reduce the timer's time. Now, one thing you have to be aware of right now is that we only listen to this lifecycle in this specific homepage. Now to illustrate this a bit more, we'll create a new widget and this will be just another page. And as we don't really care about UI right now, we'll just have a empty scaffold. So by just going up to the homepage and adding a centered button. And when we press this button, we can simply do a push replacement and just show that other page we created. So now if we go ahead and run the application, we can see that we have a button where it just says route. And as this is the home page, we can see that the lifecycle is actually working here. But if we go to the other page and just navigate out and in, we can see that we don't get any printing in the console. And that is because this new page we have routed to, which is pushed replaced, doesn't actually implement the widgets binding observer. Now, sometimes you don't actually want this behavior. Maybe you always want to react to this different state and it doesn't care about the different widgets. To accomplish this, we can create a new widget and this widget will be wrapped around the material app. So we'll just copy all of the code in my homepage and then navigating to a new file. We will call this file something like app lifecycle manager. And inside this file, we'll just paste everything of the homepage. We'll start by renaming it to something like app lifecycle manager. And then of course, adding all of the necessary imports. Now, after we've done that, we'll just change the build method some because we actually don't want it to return its own scaffold. We'll remove all of that. And then in the top, we will add a new parameter for the constructor. First off, we remove the title and then we create a new final field for a widget, which we will just call child. Now we can just add the child to the constructor. And then in the return statement, you would just write widget.child. And that's actually for now the, all we have to do in this app lifecycle manager. So if we navigate back to the main.dart, we can start by wrapping the material app with this new created widget. So if we just type the app lifecycle manager, and of course fixing the imports to use relative imports, we then have to also scroll down to my homepage and just remove all of the code relating to the widgets binding observer. That way we don't duplicate all of the printing and we know that it's from the app lifecycle manager and not the actual homepage. So now if we use to rerun the application, check the console and then of course navigating out and back in, we can see all of our prints. And this also works if we navigate to our new page. So now if you want to handle different scenarios for the whole application, you can do that in there instead. That way you're not bound to having it in specific pages or screens or whatever you want to call it, but actually have a specific widget for that instead. And with that, we have actually implemented all we need to do for handling the app lifecycle for a Flutter application. If you like this kind of videos, make sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it, dislike it if you disliked it. I'm working on a course, so it would be awesome if you would sign up for a newsletter. When the course is released, I will of course pick a couple of people to actually win the course. Other than that, if you want to support me, you can check out Patreon down in the description. It really helps. And while you're at it, why not check out the other videos coming up on the screen right now? I really recommend the Flutter Widgets lifecycle. So if you haven't seen it, make sure to check it out. And I will see you in the next one.